name is Ed Gillette. You might recognize me. I did the Ralph Records 10th Anniversary Radio Special, and I've also been on Kojak a couple of times. I have been hired by the residents to come out here and kind of explain the show to you as it goes along. I have been armed for this task with a script to the show, which I have right here, and I have also seen all the shows to date. First of all, and perhaps most important, the gentlemen who are out here with the eyeballs on their heads and are now standing over there are the residents. Okay, the first tune that you heard was called Voices of the Air. As far as I can make out, one of the residents talks about the weather all the way through it. It's just exposition, very unimportant. <laughs> that was followed by the secret sea. A few people come out and run around with flashlights in their hands. It says in the script that this was supposed to show us how moles have sex or something. <laughs> it didn't look like sex to me either, but then again, we're not moles. Well, that's it for right now. I'll be over here watching the show with you, and I'll back out when we're lost again. <laughs>
flashy in a low-tech sort of way. But how many of you have any idea what's going on in the plot? What's going on in the plot? Okay, well, I'll help you out as best I can, really superficially. First of all, we had God of Darkness over here. That was just religious garbage. You can forget about that. <laughs> that was followed by Working Down Below, which teaches us that the moles work down below and seem to enjoy it. Then we had First Warning there to get your attention. That was followed by lulling us all back to sleep with Return to Normality, and then bang, the strobe lights and the colored backdrops. That was the sky falling. Now coming up next is another religious number, so we can all take a little rest. the desert, and then they are finally going to be led by one of the residents to the promised land. Now, uh, I know what it's like to lose your home. When I was a kid, my house burned down, and uh, my parents were very upset. I thought it was kind of cool because I got to be on television and stuff. But my dad would take a bus to work, and he'd always get on the wrong bus from our new house. And this is just like, I don't know, it's like a million moles all on the wrong bus and all very confused. You watch. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Joey? Amen! Uh, the residents have another minute or two to get ready. And before they do, I have something I'd like to share with you. I believe that there is only one resident, and that he controls the other three, just like he controls all the rest of us. Let me show you. Don't get excited, just me. Other residents. Actually, that has nothing at all to do with the resident. Actually, I just wanted to show you that I, I could indeed do something. I was a juggler for a while. I've also written a couple shows. I, uh, I do some sword swallowing. I've done some stuff on television. And on top of everything else, uh, I'm a fire eater. Let me, let me show you here. Thank you. I'm not kidding. Yeah. Joey, could you bring down the lights a little bit? Hey, 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 hey. Thank you.
lick your lips, clap your teeth, and we're back. The moles are about to enter an entirely new land. The land looks like this, and this is the land of the chubs. This little fellow here is a chub. And the chubs are going to welcome the moles with open little chubby arms. But the reason is not because the, uh, the chubs are, are very benevolent towards the moles, but rather because they can use the cheap labor. They figure the moles will make good maids or something. So I've always had this thing that fair is fair, and the moles have no choice. They have to go to a new land. Their old land is destroyed. But the chubs do have a choice. They can either welcome the moles in, or they can put them to work as cheap labor, exploit them. And here's where fair is not fair, because the chubs are not trying to help out the moles in any way, shape, or form. They're just trying to get themselves ahead and use and use the moles. And okay, you got the idea. Go ahead.
all we need. Now, this is the kind of attitude I expected from the Chubbs all along. You see, nobody needs to be told they're not needed. No one needs to be told they're not necessary. I don't care how useless you are. I don't, I don't care. I, I don't care what. You don't need to be treated like that. That's just not the way people should treat each other. Which, which brings up something else. I was going to take, I was going to take a second and say this. There's some people that have been yelling at me, shut up like that, like I'm not necessary. And I want to tell you that I do feel unnecessary. The reason I feel this is the residents gave me an airplane ticket from Los Angeles, California. They flew me over here. I get my meals. I get paid per diem. I get a salary. And I don't think it's some sort of weird joke with the residents. I think I really am necessary. But whether I am or not, I ride on the bus with these men, and, and this guy doesn't. So there. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 
supposed to be in the show. When we played in the United States, the moles and the chubs had a cultural exchange, and they decided if we were going to come to Europe and the residents were going to make any money, the promoters said they had to have more of a, more of a slam bang ending. So, uh, so they, 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 they said they were going to put this ending, and this is not the residents' idea. This is just, this is, this is not the residents. Get the fuck out of my face, you asshole. Listen, I got a few things to say. Andy, you, Andy, you keep this microphone on or I swear to God I'll fucking kill you. I'm the only one in this whole fucking crew that gives a good goddamn about the moles and the chubs or you people way up into this rat track to see a half-assed show put together. What are you trying to do? Fuck me? Get out of here. Just, listen. Okay, take the microphone and kick your fucking ass.
I know we did. I know we did. I know we did. I remember. I remember. It was, it was in the script. It was in your script. It was in mine, too. It's been, it's, it's been very, it's been a long time to get here. But, but it was in your script. And it was in my script. And it's what's supposed to make the end of the show good. And once that happens, everything is all right. I can even make a little symbolic gesture and let you go. Quick. There's one thing that we never could. I mean, this this is a mole right here. No, it's a chub. I forget. We wanted to know who's the moles and who's the chubs, but. We thought that he was. A, we thought that he was a chub, but he's all right. He's a, he's a big chub, but he's all right. <laughs> but we couldn't find out what the hands that glow were. You know, nobody knew what the hands that glow. Nobody knew. But I think I found out. They they come right up here. <coughs> See, then they come right here. See, like this. I, I don't. See, I don't need. I don't, I don't. Here, there. I don't. I don't need those. But but I need something. And then after things change, after you do something different, it, it might be better. It, it might be worse. I don't know. It might be better. It might be worse. I don't know. It'll be different. And then maybe things will get a little more satisfying. I don't, I don't really know. Maybe. Thank <laughs> you.